In this episode we will cut down some foam, few holes, spread over some glue and make awesome wing that will shine in the sky. So let's do it, it will be enjoyable. For hot wire cutting I will use simple compact rigid frame from 20mm plywood, tensioning hook and strong spring that compensate the wire expansion by heat. I use 26 gauge Nichrome 80 wire and using this amazing calculator I got the power supply requirements for the wire and the length. Or vice versa, I had 20 volt 4.5 amp power supply so I put that in the calculator and played with the wire line. That way I got to the safe operational amperage and required temperature. And that's it. If you wanna roll power to the wire and keep the cutter as simple as possible. The only way to keep the temperature in reasonable range is to check the calculated temperature and if it's too high you can make the wire longer to provide more resistance. Suitable temperature for XPS foam is around 315 to 400 degrees Celsius. Anyway, I would recommend some temperature control. That can be done by many ways. Correctly rated dimmer, DIY PWM generator with MOSFET or plug and play components. I use Arduino running code that reads analog value from potentiometer and adjusting duty cycle of PWM signal that is sent to the MOSFET module. The MOSFET then regulates the roll power and dust temperature. And the Arduino is supplied by 5 volts from this little tiny step down converter from Matic. That's really it. So let's cut some foam and inhale some toxic fumes. That means do it in a well ventilated area. Fortunately, my entire table is a spray box, exhausting the fumes outside. For this kind of short segments, I felt better control with moving the foam by hands rather than having it stationary. Somehow it's more satisfying to watch the cuts now than actually cutting it. I started with the middle section because it's shorter and easier for beginner. And I had extra blocks for training before moving to the longer outer parts. The first two attempts were, well, garbage. It could be usable after some sanding probably, but the third one finally was great. After that I began with the outer parts and here's the moment of failure, where I learned a lot. First attempt, garbage. But after inspection I saw where I made mistakes, so I planned my steps better. The most challenging is the fact my wings are tapered, so you have to go different speed on each end, but mainly I couldn't see the templates over the foam. So I mark points on leading and trailing edge, as well as the channel edges, so I had a better overview of the shape. Which worked on another attempt and the only issue was I dragged the wire quite a lot, resulting in a little sag before I reached the channel's edge. Fortunately, I have my template 0.5mm bigger, as to learn so sending will fix it. With this in mind, and assuming higher temperature would be better to eliminate drag, the another part of the wing went way better. The temperature control also helps a lot in slower and curvy paths. So I always lead in with lower temperature and then racing it up for the longer paths. What I also learned is that the templates could have been designed in a better way. Next time, lead in and out segments. Then I thought maybe I could divide my cuts into quadrants, so I'm always moving away from the edges. And it was a good idea actually. Lead in in the middle with low temp and cut towards the edges where I can lead out more precisely. That's what I've done with the V-tail segments and it was more comfortable. The contour was way more consistent. The shape of the tail is tapered and swept, so unfortunately the short side where the wire moves slower, it melts the foam more, leaving the ridges behind. And again, plus 0.5mm margin for sanding is beneficial. Here's how it fits to the tail base. With all the segments done, before gluing I have to sand the faces at the angle for dihedral and wing tips. The sanding block has 3 and 20 degrees angle. There is not much to say, only that don't forget to plan the angle orientation ahead. After sanding, it fits really well. It turned out a Gorilla Glue will be a good choice. Here I forgot to poke some holes which should make an even better bond. You can use a little of water on one face to help the reaction, especially if you are in a really dry environment. I was curious how well the glue will perform, though I glued my practice pieces together and next day it was time to test it. 
very professional static and dynamic test with 680 grams of duct tape and 2 kilos of beverage. Aesthetically it had no problem to hold both, dynamically also not a problem, so well, let's hit it even more. I dropped several times the duct tape from height of 60 cm and the glue joint didn't care. And when it failed, it was by pressing the joint completely down. Most importantly, it was not the glue joint that failed, but the foam. So Gorilla Glue passed the test. The wing is glued and it's time to glue in the spars. I can't fit the entire wing on my table because at the time I built it for plastic models I had no RC homie, so the footage might be a little limited here. I bended the ends of the alu profile as a base for my polyhedra, further extending by carbon spars. I decided to glue in this woody strip to reinforce the joint. And side note, I guess next time I would rather go with drilling holes for wing spars than making this channel. It just takes more time. I consider it as an option only if you don't have a drill. I premix the Gorilla glue in a cup about 1 to 1 ratio with water and smear the channel. And it was foaming. Quite a lot. Anyway, now only to sand it down and give the entire wing finished sanding. Imperfections can be filled with super light filler. The wing is now only missing the tips, but those will be glued later. Now we need to coat the wing. My initial plan was to use color tapes, but uh, as I tested the adhesion, it was really unacceptable. It holds very well on Depron, but not on the XPS foam. So uh, what to do now? I want nice and smooth finish. So I went the foam wear style. On test pieces I tried to glue light brown packing taper with PVA glue. In combinations of wet or dry paper and raw or diluted glue. And any option holds on the foam board better than on actual foam board. The best result was wet paper and raw glue, but it's extra weight so instead just a little diluted glue. Now it's gonna be good for tape or spray paint. Can't wait to use this color. I'm gonna start sheeting the beetle as first to get some practice. Before that carbon spar and servo position planning. My drill bit was not long enough to go through in one pass so I had to do it from both sides. Which seems complicated. I wish I had an x-ray. Maybe I got one. Hyper flashlight will do the job. Look at that, what a life hack. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. With successful drilled hole, I decided to sheet it before servo installation. I just don't feel comfortable with servo and wire being back to the wing for good. Spray the paper with some water and let it soak. Wipe all the water excess and apply glue on the foam. Smooth the paper out and next Fold the overlap over the trailing edge to make it more rigid. Use the table to fold it over. The same process for the leading edge and the other side. You can fold over the trailing edge for a second time to make it even stronger as the foam itself is really weak there. I also recommend spraying the paper with some water to relieve strain while the paper dries out to prevent twisting. Consider air humidity and temperature. The glue and paper dries at different rates. When it's dried, the paper gives the foam significant strength at low extra weight. The surface is so great, really smooth and precise. The last steps are to cut the control surfaces and install servos. I will speed this up. I mark the outlines and cutting carefully. No rush here. Hinge of the control surface will be the paper itself and hot glue. After bending against ruler, I made a very shallow cut to set angle end then cutting the taper and a little of hot glue to make it more durable. I will try this slim light servo variant, but the regular 9 gram servo would also fit in there. Marking outlines, carefully cutting and digging. Control horn aligned with the servo, glue, lightweight filler and it's ready for painting. And the same process for the main wing. Here I have to sheet each segment individually, first outer parts and then the middle with a little of overlap. It's also very crucial to cross cut the excess of paper around edges to eliminate the strain. The final cut is done in dry state. I decided to grab the tips manually from short segments, printing out templates and cut off the counter, and then just manual sanding. At the end of the wing I use about 4 cm spikes of barbecue skewers for reinforcement and then just Gorilla Glue. Fix it with paper masking tape as the glue will expand a little. It might require some light finish sanding to match the contour of the wing. Sheeting this stupid, I mean rounded surface will be interesting. So let's try my luck. Applying glue and really wet sheet of paper. 
water will be really essential for this process. Cross cutting the edge, some glue on the other side and folding over. Smoothing out over and over again until it tightly follows the surface. Spray it with a lot of water to soften the paper and again smooth it out. Look at that, that's the upholstery skill right there, even though I never done any upholstery stuff before. And the bottom part is easy, basically just a flat surface. All the wings are now ready for painting. Light coat of acrylic primer and when it's dry, if there is some garbage on the surface, really gentle sanding will fix it. The cool neon green color will be applied first and it has to be masked out before black paint. I use some light green as base and Tamiya neon green for final toning. Here the wing is masked for the black paint. I rub the masking tape against my clothes to reduce adhesion so it won't rip off the color when removing the tape. And this is the final result of the wing build. I can wait to crash it on maiden flight and be upset as f Hopefully not. In the next episode we will aim for building the fuselage, wing mount and the rest. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, leave a like and I will appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel. Take care and I will see you next time.